News photographers generally serve as the eyes for the public, but at this time of year, we like to give them voice too. We've asked the staff photographers of the Virginian Pilot to identify two images that they photograph and talk to us a little bit about why they think they're significant or memorable. Parades usually kick my tail. I'm either not in the right position, I can't catch up with the float I think I want to photograph, or I totally get distracted by the crowd. Finally, an event I can work with. I spotted Dame Mary Baracco coming a half mile away, gorgeous hair and a fabulous baby blue car. I walked along with the vintage auto until I made a frame where the foreground worked, and I learned that she was a World War II POW captured with her fiancé by the Gestapo after they joined the resistance. She was tortured, beaten, and at age 19 sterilized, her fiancé killed. And here she is at age 92, waving the American flag in the Tidewater Veterans Day Parade. I was done with assignments for the day, and skies were gray with the coming winter storm. I drove the back roads of Chesapeake looking for something interesting. And I find this old barn on a farm owned by four brothers on Blue Ridge Road. One brother had pulled the 57 Chevy in as far as it would go a month or two earlier. Another brother used to make the American flags and sell them. The snow falls. I make a U-turn, roll down the window, and take a photograph. I've had few greater honors as a photojournalist than to spend several days in the newspaper studio earlier this year with 58 local Vietnam veterans making portraits and facilitating video testimonials. These are a sample of the images which were part of the Virginian Pilots series to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War and to honor the service of our local heroes. Connor Johnson, 17, a rising senior in Marquette University High School in Milwaukee, photographed an early morning light after he and 15 classmates spent a night in the slave quarters at Bacon's Castle in Surrey. The students were on a 10-day Civil War adventures tour led by their history teacher, Chris Lease. Johnson had slept in slave cabins in previous summer history tours. He said, there's a psychological effect. You think there were slaves sleeping here. I'll never get used to sleeping in them. The light was just right as I walked up to cover the decommissioning ceremony for the USS Kaufman. The chief petty officer was positioning the crew along the rail of the ship. I needed to wait for the right moment to not disturb the scene as he was stepping in and out of the sunlight. It all came together as his dress white uniform against the dark ship made for a perfect storytelling image. It was my first evening homecoming assignment. At the rainy pier of Norfolk Naval Station, I spotted a man who was holding a bouquet of pink flowers. Long before the sight of the hospital ship Comfort, he was staring at the empty water. I was wondering what he was thinking. It was a Marine, Lieutenant Connell Greg Hoffman, with his 26 years of service, and he was waiting for his wife, Lieutenant Commander Beth Hoffman, a Navy nurse at Portsmouth Naval Medical Center. When I asked him about the flowers, he simply replied, because I love her. After following the leaders on the golf course for 18 holes, I was exhausted. The best moment came when Min Chi Lee, 2015 King's Mill Championship winner, buried her face inside the trophy. It happened when everyone was walking away. Just then, she lowered her face inside the trophy perhaps to contain her emotion. And of the prize money, Minji says she will buy herself and her mother a good meal, a lot of good meals. One of the great things about working as a newspaper photographer is the variety of situations you get into and the surprising photographs that sometimes happen. I was making photographs of James Gosson, owner of Metal Concepts, and his crew putting together the cementoscope, the creation of three local artists. They were fitting the kaleidoscope into a fabricated cement mixer, and it just wouldn't fit. Gosson climbed in, and sparks began to fly as he used a grinder to round off a corner, allowing the pieces to fit together. The art piece now sits in the plot on Granby Street. It was a difficult question to ask Jane Gardner. Can I photograph you when you have your head shaved? She paused for a moment, but only briefly. Of course you can. Jane had invited the pilot to follow her journey with ovarian cancer. I was glad to be there on the night when she had a friend shave her head. She made it a celebration. I was glad to be there, too, a few months later when her oncologist told her that she was in remission. 
Despite working past midnight for nearly two weeks, I had a blast shooting an eyewitness page of stylized portraits and an online gallery of the outstanding performers that can be seen nightly throughout the summer along Virginia Beach's Atlantic Avenue. E.C. Hanna, 23, of Norfolk, the product of a family of puppeteers and a graduate of the King's College in New York City, is the production company's creative consultant and performs as a clown in the circus, as well as manning the aforementioned flea circus. As dancers were getting ready for the final rehearsal of Sleeping Beauty, out of the corner of my eye, I saw two cast members helping each other with their tutus. The light was beautiful, the window frames and its color was interesting, and so was the moment. Got a few frames as they were finishing up. I was not sure if the image was in focus or not. I got lucky on this one. I started my shift as I usually do when it comes to nor'easters. It was day two or three of the early October system that hovered over coastal tidewater, and I was over it. Starting at the ocean front and working inland, I ran across these girls near the end of my shift. They made me feel so old. They scampered through their flooded neighborhood in bathing suits, bacteria in the water be damned. I slogged after them in my waders and raincoat, but didn't stand a chance of keeping up with them. I was lucky enough to get a few shots off as they skipped past me. Thanks, Maggie, Bell, and Cassie. Y'all made my day. It was nearly midnight when I got the call at home. People were reporting the ocean in Sandbridge was glowing. I gathered my gear, drove down to the beach, where the waves were crashing bright blue under this dark sky full of stars. Seeing this thing's one thing, but capturing the image for the newspapers another, especially with the midnight deadline. I only had a few tries using my best guess of low-light long exposures, but seeing the photo of the luminous waves in the paper the next day reminded me of why I love what I do. The readers got to see something very unique because my coworkers and I brought it to them. 미국은 참 이상한 나라야, meaning America is a strange country. Stood on the edge of the Utah salt flats, my father said in Korean with amazement in his voice. Shallow pool of rainwater was reflecting a perfect blue sky. It looked as if heaven were meeting earth. This picture is a happy reminder of the toughest road trip that I ever taken. It took 15 days, past the 16 states, 5,380 miles, and one minivan with six of my family members.